15 and verse 3. Second Chronicles 15 and verse 3. It's a scripture that I've used here once and again. The Bible says, Now for a long season, Israel had been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without law. Israel had been without a true God and a teaching priest and without law. Let's read verse 4. It says, but when they in their trouble, so trouble was the next imminent thing that happened because of the absence of the presence of the true God, the teaching priest and law. They got into trouble, but the Bible says they turned to the God of Israel and when they did, he was found of them. It is, it is very easy to be able to define the longevity of an organization, of a nation, of a territory. You can know that by their honor to these three factors. Back to verse 3, please. Number one, their honor to the true God. They are false gods. And even when you honor false God, gods, they do not sustain the power to help. But the Bible says this, our God, is an ever-present help, even in time of need. Hallelujah. Number two, people can honor the God of the Bible. Please keep that scripture there. And then not have the presence of teaching priests. You can have a priest, but if the priest, praise God, is not a teaching priest, then you stand the chance of losing the longevity of the impact, the exploits of an organization, of a nation, a church, a society. And then he says, without law. Once you have a people who are a lawless people, it will inevitably lead to a decline and the decadence of any nation and any society. And so when God wants to bless and honor a nation, please listen carefully. When God wants to bless and honor a territory, when God wants to bless and honor a kingdom-driven organization, he doesn't give them money. Listen to my message, redefining inheritance. When God truly wants to bless a people, he does not give them anything material. What he does is number one, he brings them to the consciousness of the true God. John 17 and verse 3, this is eternal life that they may know thee, the one true God and Jesus whom thou hast sent. Hallelujah. And then number two, God grants them the privilege and the honor to sit under the influence of faithful witnesses. The Bible calls them teaching priests. These are pastors according to Jeremiah 3.15. He says, and I will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Not just stories. They will feed you with knowledge and understanding. And then God brings a level of decorum to the life of an individual. Because the Bible says a man who does not have control over his spirit is like a city that is without walls. A city that is without walls is a city that is at risk. Anything and anyone can invade that city. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 2. This is the anchor scripture upon which the Koinonia School of Ministry was built upon. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, it says the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. In the economy of God, please look up, in the economy of God, he does not expect truth to stay with only an individual indefinitely. Every time God sends a word to Jacob, his intent is that it will light upon Israel. Are we together? So the way that God spreads his purposes and prepares men is to find an individual and subject that individual through the covenant of alignment to a point in the spirit where you can host certain dimensions of knowledge and power and grace. And then you are now mandated from that point to become a distributor of the same. 
This is what we have seek to achieve over these nine years in the school of ministry. That out of the abundance of that which we have been privileged to have as faithful stewards, it says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Hallelujah. What is your faithfulness? Your faithfulness is in not keeping back anything that is profitable for God's people. According to Acts 20 and verse 20, it says, I did not hold back. I didn't hold back anything that was profitable unto you, provided it can make for your excelling, provided it can make for your rising. I will not keep it back. Hallelujah. And so we thank God again for these precious people who have submitted themselves to a very rigorous training. I submit to you that the school of ministry is quite intensive and it would require a certain level of determination for you to be able to stay and even survive to the end. For a charge tonight before we get into the impartation, I felt stirred in my heart to reiterate what I told Azaria Campus at their graduation on Friday. Um, just three things that the Lord put in my heart and these have been my contemplations even in the recent weeks. The first is Hebrews chapter 1, chapter 4 from verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 2. It says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. There was a problem here now. It says the word preached did not profit them. You would think just because it is the word, it should profit immediately. That even in the presence of the word, the genuine unadulterated word, there is still a condition. It is possible that the word of God can be unprofitable in the life of the recipient, in the life of the hearer. And what was the problem there? The Bible says, not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Hallelujah. Many times believers submit themselves to superior knowledge and you would think in the presence of superior knowledge, they should immediately and automatically have dramatic results in their lives. But that is not the case. There are people who even in the presence of Jesus, they were not changed. I hope you know that just because you are around Jesus does not guarantee transformation. There were people who wanted to make money out of Jesus rather than being changed from him. There are others who wanted to use Jesus to fuel their ambition. So just because you are around Jesus does not guarantee that you will be a recipient of life. Many people are unable to maximize the truth that they know because they do not mix it with faith. What is faith? In one word, obedience. Faith in one word is obedience. The obedient action that you take based on your conviction of who God is and the integrity of his person. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.